think that the American founders would look at the police forces in the country today as the sort of standing army that they fear. You know, you have armed, uniformed agents of the government who patrol the streets. Get off the move! I'm Radley Balco, and I'm author of the new book, Rise of the Warrior Cop, The Militarization of America's Police Forces. The SWAT team came about in Los Angeles by then-inspector in the LAPD named Daryl Gates. And Gates was in charge of the LAPD's reaction to the Watts riots, and he likened it to, to basically a kind of an urban guerrilla warfare. Gates thought that it showed that uh, the department did not have the proper resources, the proper equipment, the proper training. And so he turned to the military. Uh, he turned to the special forces units and the Marines. And he came up with this idea of assembling an elite, highly trained, specialized police unit to deal with these kinds of emergency situations. We must wage what I have called total war against public enemy number one in the United States, the problem of dangerous drugs. And then at the same time, you have Nixon declaring war on drugs and introducing a lot of ideas into Congress, trying to get them passed into the law that were... Uh, kind of pretty radical and uh, aggressive uh, for the time. Uh, one of them was the no knock raid. We saw these horror stories started to emerge. Narc officers, you know, breaking into homes in the middle of the night, uh, a lot of times without warrants, they hadn't bothered to get warrants, getting the wrong house, terrorizing families, and these stories started popping up all over the country. Officers busted into a home armed with a warrant, but tonight the resident says they had the wrong address. You know, these SWAT raids are about 100 to 150 per day in the United States now, which is up from, I think, about 10 a day in the early 1980s. Show me your hands now! Show them. I mean, when you take a police officer and you arm him like a soldier and dress him like a soldier and train him like a soldier and then send him out onto city streets and into the American neighborhoods and tell him he's fighting one of several different wars, Here we go. Go. that go, go, is go. going to have an effect on the mentality of police officers and the way they approach their jobs. After September 11th, uh, the Department of Homeland Security started giving out these anti-terror grants. So we've really seen a kind of an explosion of militarization. I mean, it was already accelerating pretty quickly up until September 11th, but since, it's really accelerated at a much quicker pace. You know, they're given to these unlikely terror targets like Tuscaloosa, Alabama, or Canyon County, Idaho, uh, Fond du Lac, Wisconsin. Of course, once you have it, the equipment inevitably gets used for more mundane police work. We are one of the interesting things we saw during the Occupy protest is that these tactics were now being used against kids who had access to social media and they were very savvy with it, they knew how to use it, they knew how to spread the word, they knew how to record what the police were doing. You know, you really started to see a lot of discussion and debate and a lot of pushback on these sorts of tactics and whether they're tactics that are appropriate for a free society. 